Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rosie and I'm an MSc student studying Forensic Archaeology and Anthropology. Today I have a bit of a different video. I am being joined by a photographer. She specialises in portraiture and concert photography. Her name is Nikki Marie and you can find her here. These are all her socials and I'll put some of her photos up on the screen as well. We're just going to chat about getting into photography, you know, how to maybe go about telling your parents or guardians that you don't want to do a classic sort of academic path in life. Maybe you want to switch careers, maybe you want to turn your favourite hobby into a job. We're going to chat about that and it's just going to be an informal chat. We're going to answer loads of questions that I've been sent on Instagram and Twitter and it's going to be really nice. Hi! Hey, what's up? Um, so my name is Nikki Marie. I am a concert photographer who has been doing it for 10 plus years. And yeah, so I, I tour with bands. I do music portraiture. I photograph celebrities sometimes. But other than that, <laughs> glamorous job of being a daycare teacher. So <laughs> it's interesting you say that, actually, because someone, in fact, the most amount of questions was, is photography your job? So it's my it's so right now it's my secondary job um my main job right now is actually a daycare teacher i work from 7 in the morning to 4 p.m and then um after that i have a second job where i work at a pizzeria as a receptionist or whatever like a person in the front desk and i work there from 4 30 to 8 30 and then on the weekends i usually do shoots like for families and stuff like that that's kind of how i earn most of my money and then i do graphic design work art commission work i'm a babysitter also when people need it <laughs> when i'm doing like tour of concert photography like that's my main job like i don't i like go on tour and then all my other jobs disappear for a couple of months. So you literally travel with them everywhere. So April 2019 is actually when I went on tour with Logan Henderson from Big Time Rush, an entire East Coast tour with him. It was really fun. I actually loved it. Uh, that was the first time I was like on board with the team. Before that, I was um, I was pretty much like low key following along with the tour. So that was like my major employee tour so far. I did this tour and I was like, okay. I meant to do this. I meant to sleep in hotel rooms and do photos till one in the morning, go out, bang it out again the next day. Like it was just, it was literally so much fun. What do you do in the daytimes? Cause I assume most of the shows, the shows are in the evening. Seven and eight is usually like sound check in the morning. Then we kind of get a break around 12. I used to go out with Logan uh, for lunch most of the time. And then his other bandmates would kind of go off or something or we, they would join us. And we would go get food, walk around a little bit, kind of explore the town. Then we would have to be back around like three, four yeah. for a meet and greet. And then the meet and greet would happen. And that's like about two hours. And yeah. then... After that, he would go kind of upstairs to do his thing and I would chill around, do some behind the scenes photos and stuff. And then I would pretty much, I would either like charge my camera or sometimes I would upload the meet and greet photos. Showtime is like 7.30 and we just get amped up and then we go out and I shoot his usual, I, I actually shot his whole set for this tour um, because I wanted to get as much pictures as possible. So I was shooting right from his beginning of his set to his last song which was great usually it's the first three songs but when you're like employed by the artist shoot as much as you want it but usually when you're in the pit and you're pressed it's only like the first three songs because <laughs> you have to just you have to get your shot or you have to that's it some bands okay so most of the time uh, so for warp tour i learned that the first three songs they do like the power stuff so they're banging yeah. it out doing the power stuff so that way you get your shot so the that's photos but also because of warp tour you're in the pit so it goes like crowd pit stage so mm -hmm. they're jumping on boxes um a lot of times 90 percent of the time um crowd surfers yeah crowd surfers and you're in the pit and the security needs to be there so you have people being thrown at you while you're taking photos and it's like it's a lot so the first three songs you get your you know whatever and then you go to the side and sometimes you can go into the crowd it's always nice to get crowd shots because you get people with the pride flag you get people holding their phone you get people doing this like it's just like it's really a pure candid and i do love candid photography so much i think that's why i love concert photography so much because it's like if you can capture something that's not posed and you can make yeah. somebody feel something so deeply from a photo that isn't you know created it's just happened like that's like the ultimate for me. They're not staring at your camera. You know, they're not posing a certain way. They're just, 
they're living their best life. And like, that's what you want. That kind of energy is just so overwhelming to, you know, people, when you see a picture, like I know for a fact, like, like when I was seeing concert photography and I would see these shots, I was like, you just see like performance. It's really, it's just super incredible. I just love it so much. Some bands don't even let you in the pit. So you have to stand on the side to get the shot. One of those bands was Jonas Brothers. When I was shooting Jonas Brothers at um, BLI, this like radio station, that local radio station, mm. I was shooting their summer concert. They had pyrotechnics. So they told everyone in the pit, they're like, you can't be here. And we're like, why not? Like, we have to get our shot. Like, we're literally employed to do this. And they're like, no, 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 you can't, can't be here. And I was like, hey, like, it's my job. Like, I work for the radio station. And they're like, no, like, it's like a safety issue. And I was like, what kind of safety issue? Oh, okay. Like, kind of have to like teach yourself get the shots and get out. Do you edit them as well? Yes, always. Um, I'm super, I'm a stickler for editing. I mean, you, you're technically when you shoot, you're supposed to shoot artsy. So like, you know, when you're taking pictures, like I find like, I used to rapid shoot, which was like, hold, it was like trigger syndrome where they, you hold the camera button mm-hmm. down like 700 pictures, like doing like one or two photos that are really good. Like that's what you want. You know, you don't, I mean, it's always nice to have a super big variety of stuff, but I feel like when I'm shooting in the pit, I just want to get like a solid art shot, you know? Cause like, I want that one pinnacle photo that people are going to be like, holy crap, but I'm a stickler. Like I'll come home. I have to edit. I have to, I can't just like release a photo. There's one shot. Oh God. What is it? Oh, the, the pride flag at his show at his solo show. Yeah shots are so he's jumpy he's a jumpy dude and I'm in the I'm only on one side like so because I wasn't in the pit it's it's more of a get what you get and you know just anticipate this kid's movement and so he I mean he was jumpy all over the place not to mention I was drunk because (laughs) this is my last Harry show and I wasn't really like I was taking it seriously but I wasn't because I wasn't expecting to actually get my camera in there because getting camera in there like it's so I have a new camera now it's um it's a it's an a7 which is a full frame camera it's it's sony which was like new to me because I'm usually an icon person but people were kind of like blasting about how great this camera is and it's tiny it's it's pretty much like this big and then like it's got you know smaller lenses and stuff it's almost like it looks like a point and shoot so you can easily get away with it anywhere my dslr camera is chunky like it is like the body is like this big okay and then the lens that I was using at that show is this big like this wide yeah so I did the secret thing and like people are gonna enjoy it but I I respect that so I took it apart I put like the camera cap on it and I hid that body of it in my sweatshirt and then because like now it's in a soft thing and you know in security they just move shit around and the lens I put in a makeup bag and I mean, sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. And he's just running everywhere on the stage. So I'm just like, brr, brr. I mean, I sh- think I narrowed it down to 350 pictures, but it was around, it was around 1600 photos. The only thing I didn't photo was his opening, which I regret because he comes down in the cloud of smoke, like an angel. Oh. He has really nice lighting on his stage. That's another thing. Like I love the lighting on his stage. It's always so bright and right in your face and stuff. So it's always super helpful for one direction. Um, Theirs was hard because they only had those little spotlights and those little stage lights. So I'm like, I'm like trying to get it. And like, they're so dark, but those backlight photos, I mean, they change, they change the picture completely. It always looks so wonderful. And I'm always so upset, obsessed with it. But um, yeah, same for like Louis show. I think Louis had like backlights too. And I'm, I'm just like, I love that lighting because it yeah. always makes them look like angels. And I'm like, yeah, I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> the beautiful light halo and I was like as you should as you should (laughs) one of the hardest things to like edit is red lighting so red lighting is a nightmare so you can either be your best friend or it can be your worst nightmare because red lighting um it blows out the coloring on their face and it's just like you have to go in in detail and it's just like it's like it's a hassle so I kind of get mad when people have like red lighting because I'm like really like thanks for making my job super easy now I have to sit here for three hours and edit your picture did you ever have a mentor to sort of teach you to edit or teach you to take photos or even just help you navigate the industry? Or is it all sort of a self-feeling thing? You know what? I honestly, I really didn't. Um, I started taking pictures. So I've always been an artist. I've always been like a drawing artist and I always do like drawing and everything like that. 
And um, I started photography when I was in 10th grade. I had this little crappy $20 camera and I took this picture of the Brooklyn Bridge at night. Beautiful. I was like obsessed. I was like, yes, I want to do this. I want to do this. Um, and I sort of continued on from there. You know, I took like the high school courses. One of the benefits of having ADHD is you spiral a lot. So mm-hmm. I spiral on photography. So I went into YouTube and I was YouTubing cameras, YouTubing tutorials, everything I can get my hands on, reading books, everything. And then when I turned 18, I started going to shows by myself. I kind of just figured out on my own. A lot of times you can't really get someone to mentor you. It's a cutthroat business because so many people take photos, mm-hmm. at concerts. So it's like an immediate fight to the death about like, who you know, who you're shooting with, whatever. Yeah. Because everyone wants that shot. And as soon as someone realizes that you're really good at like getting that shot, like you're shunned. So it's like, it's hard. So I kind of taught myself, I was doing a uh, local concerts at like this place called Revolution. And every, I'm going to say like every week I was at like um, the concert hall with like local bands, just getting shots, getting shots, learning, kind of just like, you know, testing the waters and stuff. Cause like at the time, like it didn't really matter to me. Cause I was like, okay, I could just build up a portfolio doing this. And I did. And then I was a fan of big time rush. And so I would talk to their management and I would put myself out there and I would take pictures at their concerts and I would go to their meet and greet events, take pictures of them at meet and greets, show them and be like, look what I can do. And uh, then they broke up. I started talking to Kendall. Like he followed me on, um, he followed me on Twitter. So I would talk to Kendall. I would do his, uh, his events. And I'd be like, when's your next New York show? Let me shoot. Let me shoot. And he one time put me on the list. I was like, hell yeah, like this is great. I had one big break and it was from this amazing person who I love. And his name is Jason Evigan. And he was in a band. I was 16. And uh, he was in a band called After Midnight Project. And if you look him up now, he's crazy famous. He writes for everybody. He writes for like Mick Jonas, Justin Bieber, Demi Lovato. Like he's massive. He gave me my big break. I was at his show. It was a local show. It was playing with like this German band that I was like in love with. It was in the city and I was 16. And he's like, I showed him the pictures I took of him and he's like, these are great. Are you coming to Warped Tour this year? And I was like, yeah, of course. And he goes, okay, cool. Come by our booth. So I was like, okay. So Warped Tour came around, went by his booth and he goes, oh, do you bring your camera? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, okay, great. Come with me. Took me over, got me a press pass, my first ever press pass. So I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't have to shoot from the crowd. It was all like pit stuff. So I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And he brought me on stage with him and he's like, shoot. And he goes, I'm on, I want you to shoot for my band today. And I was like, are you kidding? Are you joking? And he goes, no, I'm so serious. I got hired by a media outlet when I was 18. I started doing, you know, um, shows like I would apply for shows. Like I, I photographed for Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance. Um, I shot for Simple Plan a lot for patent pending. So a lot of bands and stuff, like they would like hire me for the, for like the set. And it was just, it was yeah. so incredible because Anytime I think back to like my first big like person who gave me the out, it's JC. He like really helped me. I, I mean, I wish I did have a mentor. It would have been great. But in the end, it comes down to like, you got to like open your doors for yourself, you know, and it's all about being personable. You got to talk to everybody, shake hands with everybody. That's really how you get your foot in the door when you're doing this kind of stuff. Is there more of a general route to getting noticed as a freelance photographer in general, like not necessarily concerts? You know, even if it's not concert photography, if they're having an event, if they're doing something, you know, and like, you know, like cons or cons and stuff, like I, the reason I, you know, I know Sebastian is because I photographed him at that one con and I actually paid for it because I was doing his meet and greet and stuff. And they let me in with my camera. So I had my like really nice camera and stuff. And I shot a whole bunch of photos and I got that one picture. And a lot of times he was looking at my camera because you know, he's met me before. So he saw that I was taking pictures. So he's like, you fucking around. But, um, when I met him in the meet and greet, I actually printed out one of the photos I got, which was like one of the photos I just recently tweeted of him kind of leaning down and smiling. And so I just kind of got it to like, have him sign it. You know, he was like, can I keep this? And I was like, you want to keep it? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, your work is really good. 
Um, but stuff like that, that's usually how you break into it. And also, you know, job wise, like it's hard. Um, you really yeah. have to be in with yourself with people in the like Hollywood and stuff. Like, um, you know, if you photograph one TikToker, tag me in your pictures, somebody else reaches out, tag me in your pictures, another person reaches out. It's really like word of mouth. And because, you know, when you're getting photographed, it's, it's hard to just kind of hire a photographer when you're not a general photographer, you know, if you're like photographing celebrities or something or lifestyle, like you have to have like, um, a name to yourself. So you have to be like, Oh, I know this lifestyle photographer, you know, so-and-so she shot for me this time, or I know she shot for this person. And you kind of want that because that's going to give you, that's going to give you your leeway. So my suggestion is like, if you see celebrity, um, go and you know, they're going to an event, like a premiere, go out, go out, take pictures of them. Even if it's just at the premiere or even if it's at just that like an event that they're doing a signing at. And I know you don't want to seem like a pap, like, cause there's like a difference though. Cause there's like paps, they, you know, they sell for money. You so you just want to take a couple of pictures yeah. and you, you approach them. And instead of getting a picture with them, you're like, Hey, you know, like I'm a photographer can I get a couple of like handed shots of you. They'll let you like, I did that with, um, Addison Ray. Um, she was with Courtney, um, Kardashian in the city. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, Hey, like an upcoming photographer. Can I just get a couple shots of you? Yeah. She took a, she took a couple of handages for me. It was great. Um, and that's kind of how you make your name. You kind of, you kind of have to put yourself out there. It's all about being in person. You know, you have yeah. to, you know, approach people. I know it's like terrifying for a lot of people and I trust me, I get it. Cause like I'm the same way sometimes. Um, but it's like, it's better for you to try than for you to regret it in the end. So would you say changing it from a hobby to something that you could actually have as a career is literally to just go out and do it and then share the pictures and contact people? Like everyone that was blowing up my One Direction pictures and stuff, like, you don't, that's so helpful to me. I have people contact me on my normal Instagram for like normal shoots in the city. If anybody was looking to do it, I would say just put your work out there consistently, especially on TikTok. Cause apparently TikTok everything blows up over there. So that's good. I didn't expect it to like skyrocket. And then next thing I knew I had 4,000 followers on my Twitter and I was like, what? And then I had like people making TikToks of my TikTok of my Twitter. If you were gonna give one tip for actually just getting a camera into a gig, whether that's paying for the gig or not, what would you what would you say? Please take it apart. If you take it apart, they're not gonna, cause when you come in, if you come in with a loaded camera, they're gonna be like, no. Better if you're gonna bring a camera like a DSLR, take it apart, take it apart and hide it in bits. Put it in a makeup bag, you know, like cover it with things that make people uncomfortable, like tampons. Also, when you're going into a venue, look for a security guard that like, yeah, you know, because when you get hired for a gig, they don't care. You go right in and you're fine. But when mm-hmm. you're in the crowd, like they're going to, you know, they'll, yeah. it also depends on the venue rules. Like I took mine into Jones Beach. They didn't care. They didn't care that I had my camera at Jones Beach for Ni- Niall's show. And I got through maybe six or seven songs before his photographer talked to one of the security guards. And I was third row. And one of the security guards came over to me and he taps me and he's like, he wants me to take your memory card. I'm not going to do that because that's literally stealing your property and I'm not about that. And he was just put the camera down. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. What would you say to someone whose parents or guardians just just not think that this is the right thing for them you know they need to be going to college or uni to do this this and this is there a piece of advice that you could give to i don't know even just give confidence to that person for a while i was very discouraged um doing art because i was so conditioned into thinking it wouldn't pay off you know in my head i was like oh like my family thinks this is pointless. You know, a lot of times my family was like, you're not going to get a job doing this. This is not going to be a career for you. Like it was hard, but, and for a lot of, for a long time, I stopped doing it. I stopped for a couple of years. I was depressed. I was, I got really depressed from it because it was like, I was suppressing a part of myself. And so my best advice is probably to, you know, if your parents want you to go to uni and do, you know, college and stuff, I mean, do it, but like, don't give up doing this. Please don't give up. Like take pictures, go to concerts still. Don't stop going to shows. Don't stop doing art because someone's telling you that it's not going to take you places because you shouldn't want to do it for it to take you somewhere. 
you should want to yeah. do it because you know, it's like, it's a part of you. It's making you happy. It's giving you, it's giving you something to look forward to. And I think that's really a big part for me too, because photography, like it was so blatant this year that like, I kind of lost the spark. And then, you know what? People dropped albums. I just did an Evermore shoot with my friend who um, is obsessed with Taylor Swift. We went out, we did this whole shoot, like, and it was just so, it was so like invigorating. Cause I was like, oh my God, I miss this. You know, I mean, you have to, if you want to get into it and be like solid person, like you just have to work for it and it could come to you tomorrow or it can come to you 10 years down the line. Yeah. If you have the urge, if you have the interest and the passion for it, just do it. Just do it. And like, like I said, I, like I, I go, I have four jobs and I still go to concerts. You know, I still do tours. Like if it, if I can do it, I'm going to do it, you know? And like, don't let somebody discourage you because they're not discouraging you because they think you're bad. They're discouraging you because they're probably putting it in your head that like, you can't make a living off this, but your life shouldn't yeah. be about making a living. Your life should be about living, you know, about like, it's about the experiences and stuff. But me working for jobs is like, I'm saving up because I know Harry's having chores and that's my happy place. That's my good, my safe yeah. spot, the concerts and doing that. It's just, I know it's going to make me happy. You know, it's like, I know I'm going to be in a good place. So like, definitely don't let people discourage you, especially your parents, because you know what? They're a different generation. I th I get threatened to get kicked out of my house because I have tattoos like very often, but it's like, you know, what are you going to do? This is a whole new set of rules. Like this is a mm. whole new like decade. You can't, based it off of, you know, back then it probably, it probably was a struggle, but now you can do so much. Like you can go to concerts, take pictures from a crowd and sell your prints. Yeah. That's what I'm doing, you know, um, Funko pops. I'm making Funko pops. I'm making so much off of that red bubble. I do graphic design work. I never in my life thought someone would want to buy my art. And here I have people buying every single month. Like, it's just, it's really, it's really encouraging when other people support you. So as long as you have a good support system, even if it's just your friends who are your hype squad, do it. Just do it. My camera on that note is flashing for the battery. So before it runs out, I have one more question. And that is, if you could resurrect any band or person ever, who would you go to the concert to take the pictures for? <sighs> the Beatles. Like I'm such a big Beatles fan and it's all stemming, like I said, stemming down to my older parents. Such a, such a good band, such an like influential band too. It's and that's unfortunately all I've got for this video guys. We did talk for well over two hours, but a lot of it was completely irrelevant and I'd already spent several weeks editing the video. So I just put the best bits in and you know, the best bits for anyone who wanted to go in for in I can't even talk. Anyone who wanted to go into photography, if you would like to see any specific professions interviewed in this way, then let me know in the comments. But if there's anyone else, like artists or anything, and you want to know how to get into that profession, then do let me know because, you know, StudyTube shouldn't just be about typical academia. It should be about getting everyone into the profession and career that they actually want to do and that will make them happy. Make sure you subscribe to stick around for more content, hit that notification bell. My next video will be a vlog of uni. I actually have friends in this next video, so maybe that's a reason to watch, just so I can prove it. Um, ciao. Anyway, so. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.